before Berkham Buell and I really got to know each other when we were doing the Sweet 16 together. It was a project where we skied all 16 ski areas in Montana in 16 days. And it was really the start of our company, HBNC. Uh, Corey really got to tell his story and we traveled all around Montana and became really, really close. I'd say he's almost a family member to me. So it's been really good to get to know him. On that trip, he had discussed to me about going hitchhiking throughout Montana because at the time we thought it was the only state where it's still legal. And I thought it was a good idea. Uh, I was really excited to get out and actually go hitchhiking, but I had never really saw what we were gonna film with it. You know, I've been going through my own things and just getting out on the road was something I needed to do. Uh, right before we took off on our trip, I actually had come out of the closet for the first time and it felt great. It really got me motivated to get out and do things. Um, being where me and Corey are from, it's, it's kind of scary to be different. Uh, the town doesn't really like a difference. Corey started to grow his beard out for this project and you could tell that the town just did not like it and he got really negative feedback and it really got him down in the dumps. It's kind of rough to judge who is going to be okay with you being yourself and since I got to know Corey I was comfortable with him and I hadn't told him I was out of the closet yet but I knew that he wouldn't really care. And so as we started our trip, I kind of didn't bring it up. Into Montana. We are super stoked. We're at the Continental Divide. As you can read, it's 6,870 feet above sea level. And uh, now we're going to go and uh, work our way around Montana. It, it got really boring really fast. We walked for about four miles and nothing happened. Corey had just got new socks and shoes, so he had already started to get blisters. And so the trip kind of started out slow with some negative vibes toward it. But we eventually got picked up, but we got taken right back to Dillon. And we got picked up by a high school teacher that we knew. You still work up the ski hill? You still do some things up there, yep. I'm uh, ready to move on and do something we else. We headed out on 278 instead of going through Dillon. And we walked for a while. Uh, it started to get really dark out, kind of started to look like it was going to rain, so we're like, you know what, let's just get to this bend, set up a tent, relax for the night. That sun going down. No go on that guy. <laughs> nope, not that one either. We got picked up by a family that was driving to Dillon from Jackson and they flipped around and took us back to Jackson and we stayed the night there in a tent. Oh, stayed the night in Jackson, Montana out on this nice lawn. Uh, it's a great night because we got to soak in the hot springs. <laughs> that night in the tent, I had been texting this guy that I had been talking to and I asked him to date me. He said yes, and so it was the first time I'd really been in a relationship, and so my mind was completely in the wrong spot. Um, I wasn't really thinking about filming at all. I was worried about falling in love for the first time. We got picked up in the morning by another friend we knew. He took us just a little bit outside of Jackson, and then we started walking again, and it, we really started to feel that, that getting that home turf was out of our way, and the trip was about to start but Corey's feet were still killing him. He was, he was talking about it all the time. We had to take breaks a lot. Corey would get ahead and I'd fall back and start texting the guy and just be way out of place for filming a documentary while Corey had no idea that I was sitting back in my head just struggling to find where I'm supposed to be. So we haven't got a ride in two hours. We're on Highway 43 heading to Lost Trail Pass. Boy, my feet are hurting, man. Those blisters. Every time I stop, it makes it feel so good. <laughs> Pretty wild, huh? <laughs> we were at that point where everything was starting to get really annoying. We finally ended up getting picked up by this guy going to Darby. And when we got to Darby, we walked all the way through Darby and then Corey could hardly walk at all. He was 
taking a break at every white post. We were sitting down, putting the thumb out, just just hoping for a ride because we were sick of it. Frustrated with the hum of the vehicles driving by and not picking us up. Whoo! It's getting tiring. Um, my feet are really hurting. I get to shave my beard today. I get to shave my beard today. Well, let's get to Missoula, stay with a buddy around there, and then let's just head back to Dillon and figure something else out. All right, we're in Pinesdale, Corvallis area, and uh, finally got a ride, and we're pretty stoked because it's a, it's a ride we needed to get out of where we were. We were at a place outside of Darby that was just, no one was picking us up, and it's frustrating, and you get a little, you know, just, tough I guess it's just the kind of that point that you're you want to freak out so we stayed that night in Missoula and Corey ended up shaving his beard because we we're at a buddy's house and you could instantly see his spirit change he was instantly happy and and so now I get to I gotta take this thing off look how long it is and it's red my family's Irish Oh, there's a gray one, dude. Grow a big beard. Ow! Yeah. <laughs> there's no words that can describe how I feel, really. The wind hitting it is just, it feels so good. What I missed all winter is the, the cold air yeah. against my skin, I think. <laughs> Success. Success. And then so the next morning when we got dropped off outside of Missoula, we started walking and spirits were really high and then we get pulled over by some cops. <laughs> Something just really fun happened. Uh, one of our predictions that we'd, we'd get pulled over by a cop and questioned. And uh, so we're walking along and I had a presence behind me. It felt like something was behind me so I I look behind me and there's a cop and his lights are on. Well, apparently you guys look really young for your age because somebody said that there were some 12 year olds walking down the street hitchhiking. <laughs> so I guess shaving my beard makes me look like a 12 year old, but uh, yeah, it's a compliment. I'm 35, so I don't want to be 12, but at least I look young. We got a substantial amount of rides that day. And spirits were high, but we were still set on getting back to Dillon. The people that are picking us up are caring people. It's kind of an eye-opener in my mind of how uh, society is and how people just drive by you. And it's relaxing. You get in the car and you, you're actually sitting there and it's very relaxing because it's like, oh, I'm on the side of the road. And when you're on the side of the road, it's a lot of energy you're putting out there. We get dropped off at Butte and we're walking home. We're on the home stretch. You know, we couldn't be more ready to get back. and. This guy pulls over, he jumps out of his car, we start talking to him, it ends up he's a scout for the Rainbow Gathering and he just, he asked us to go scout with him instead of going back to Dillon. We did a whole big loop. Do you, do you have to end it at that or can you just go scouting? Looks like you got all your shit. Criteria are what we actually are looking for. Big meadows, lots of water, uh, area for, for parking. Um, Get away from some beetle kill, that'd be nice. The Rainbow Gathering is a gathering of about 10,000 people that come together to pray for peace, and it's on public land, there's no money. It's all about people coming together just to express love for other people. Something that we kind of wanted to explore was the Rainbow Gathering, and uh, we're gonna do it. And it, it's by chance and fate that, that these, uh, this couple picked us up and invited us up here to, to spend the day with them. I knew instantly that the trip had changed. I had to put my full head into this and, and really go with a project that looked bad and things started to change. And for me, it was crazy because we found these people that the more different you are, they want to get to know you better. We were thought the kookaburra was going to get us when we're out there, Tony. Kookaburra is going to get you. The whole next day, we got to go run around and look through the woods at these springs to see if there's enough for people to drink. And so they're just going off doing their thing. I'm running through the woods, jumping over logs, filming. 
no matter what, we can make those two work. This one's Grizzly Bear Habitat, this is Yellowstone. You go to your first gathering and you walk around and you check out all the kitchens and cafes and there'll be, you know, 60, 70 different kitchens. And uh, when you get there and you get in, and everybody, every one of those kitchens will walk you in and offer food for free and they'll all have their own like, personality. Mm -hmm. One of those kitchens, will, you'll just click right yeah, up with, you know. Well. Everybody's warps, its humor will be the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you need many tribes kind of within the tribe because otherwise as individuals of this big old tribes, we'd sit there and tell everybody they were doing it wrong because we as individuals have different individual thoughts. 12 o'clock for I realized I was having mm -hmm. no fun. Ah, but fortunately, we have the key to escape reality. And you may see us tonight with an illegal smile. It don't cost very much. I think the biggest thing for me on this trip was sleeping next to somebody that I had been terrified of when I was a kid. And getting to know those people and learning that, you know, sometimes I'm wrong and think about people the wrong way before you get to know them. Between the springs. Uh, you get rocks with small, small specks. Montana is one of the uh, most, I'm trying to use my wording, I'm very uneducated when it comes to books, reading and writing. Um, it has uh, one it has of the, the highest mineral, minerals in the United States. At this point where we're at, we still call this live water. We still take this, boil this, or use this for cleaning purposes and stuff like that. Everybody resources, how are they resource? <coughs> I personally don't have a face. I don't do Facebook. <coughs> we gotta be careful in how we do it because... We write yeah. the directions on the back of a t-shirt, man, and we walk around with it for hours. And That's how they did it in the 70s. And really? some of the largest gatherings by flyer and t-shirt word of mouth stuff it like happened that. uh that's how it happened back then as a sober person that that's ran a sober detox kitchen for the hippie families for years there's kind of an unwritten rule that says if you can see an alcohol or if you can see a vehicle you can drink um alcohol openly um running a sober detox kitchen having four children all that kind of stuff i like to put it at least one two miles in from a parking lot so nothing else our younger our younger families are showing up. We have like a 20% increase from Occupy that hits these gatherings. 15-20% mm -hmm. every year, whatever state we impact. 15-20% first time people from that area that you know heard about Rainbow there yeah. that came in. We set up what we call Welcome Home. And that's our older families that are welcome everybody in there. They're getting snack food, giving them general information mm -hmm. about the gathering, sending them up the hills. Once you get up the hills, they're encountering all of our, all of our big sober kitchens. You make it a, vac a nice tight seal, you clean this out, you get a five gallon bucket in there, and then out of the top, you connect your adapter to your bigger, to your bigger PVCs and then reduces as it goes down. It actually creates a vacuum. By the time you're running it and water is flowing completely and takes all the air out of the pipe, it will suck water out of the ground and it will pull it up faster than the rate that the water is naturally coming out of the ground. Uh, up on that hill up here, there's also four springs that go in together that uh, make four separate kitchens. For me, it took a little while for, for me to realize I mean, immediately I started into feeding and clothing people. I didn't care about what God people believed in. I felt it was God's work. And uh, from there, it's uh, spiraled up into Rainbow needs to be educational. And we're working on big inspirational workshops on big levels, breakfast yeah. circles, inspired with, uh, you know, lodgepole workshops. Uh, we collect our butts of our antlers as we scout around. And we bring our boxes of the city and stuff. And we show people how to nap, chip their own Sweet. arrowheads. Yeah. You know, we've been building our own carts, building our own <laughs> rare boxes. And, uh, Going through all the stages every day, you'll get up there and you know there'll be anywhere from like 200 to three, four thousand people all sitting there working on workshops, and that's where that term boot camp for Armageddon comes into. Is that, you know we're teaching people how to find their clean water in the woods, how to tap their clean water when they get wet, cold, and hungry, how to how to be able to dry themselves out, how to be able to make structures in the storm. You know, how to recognize and utilize the natural herbs that God provides us that are here in such abundance. This here's the Usnir. Actually, does it have the white thread? 
It does. It soothes me. It's an antibiotic. That's good for uh, venomous spiders and snakes. I'm sure this is filtered good. If necessary, this could fill something I've dug out properly. Yeah, I'm finding good rocks. I'll play with So it was rough growing up, not really knowing if the people I grew up around forever really liked me. And so I kind of strived to find this group of people that just loved you no matter what. And through this trip, I found it. They didn't even know who I was and they loved me because I was different and because I wanted to have an adventure. Yeah, things changed my life. Uh, my father was a Hells Angel biker, didn't really have a mom around. And uh, my world is so black and white and narrow. I was taught every dirty, nasty, devious part about this world in quotes, so I didn't become part of Uncle Sam's system by being a curious young kid getting wrapped up in a dumb mix. I met Ray Rainbow Man I, and I just met a colorful world. Something was so beautiful. Something. Uh, I'm getting goosebumps. I mean, it, it, it's like all of a sudden I felt color, you know, and I, I started to lose my biased so thoughts and attitudes of, of how I viewed the world, you know. And all of a sudden was willing to sit down next to people I thought I would never sit next to you. Express stories and, and stuff like that. And it changed my life. Being gay is not who I am. It makes me a little different, but that's the best part. The best part of somebody is what's different about them. That's what makes me go out and talk to people. That's what makes me go meet new people every day. You know, I don't want to be the same as you. And I'm really glad that I'm not. So our film has, uh brought us to the Rainbow Gathering, the 2013 Rainbow Gathering, and it's in Montana. And uh, by fate and fortune, we were a part of scouting this actual spot. We're in the Big Hole Valley, one of the most beautiful places on Earth. And uh, we're gonna share this day with at least five to 10,000 other people. And uh, tomorrow is the July 4th, and we will be praying for peace. And that's what this uh, gathering is all about, is to bring people together and pray for peace. And uh, I think that's really noble and uh, really interesting at the same time. Uh, the Rainbow Gathering has a lot of negative uh, vibes and stigmas about it that uh, I guess <clears throat> need to be talked about, need to be addressed. And uh, if anything, this, this film can help us do that. And. Uh, uh, our journey is not over. Um, we, we think that um, this this happened for a reason, you know, so we could document this and, and bring something to the community and uh, the world and talk about the rainbow gathering. And my mind was so scattered at the start of it. Corey's feet were killing him right off the bat. Things just started off really bad. And as we went on, it just became more and more positive. We found a group of people that couldn't be more positive than these guys and it totally changed our trip and it changed me and it gave me a positive look on life and it made me, right after coming out of the closet, it made me realize I shouldn't be scared to do anything before I try it. So I saw with this project that HBNC had really grown. You know, Sweet 16 was a good project and me and Corey got to work together and did something really fun. And he got to tell his story and it was a really big project for Corey. But it was really where me and Corey became friends and business partners. And then the second story came along and it turned from an adventure into my story. It ended up not really being about the project. It ended up being about making mistakes and falling in love and finding yourself, exploring, not giving up when things are down, me growing up and me finding happiness. And now I really feel that HBNC is ready to start. It's ready to take off. Me and Corey know each other as well as anybody can know each other. He is my family now. Two of the most amazing things happened to me this summer and I just had to try it. I just had to go for it. And
trip, I really started thinking about being from a small town and being looked at differently because I'm gay. And I had no expectations to tell my story and things fell into place. Just like Corey always says, you put yourself out there, this stuff will happen. And my life changed dramatically. They say you can't go to the Rainbow Gathering and not leave a changed person. That's probably the most inspirational thing I can think of, is someone that just loves you unconditionally because you're a person that is polite and respectful. I know that these people care about me, and that was the biggest thing of getting to know a family. Twelve o'clock for I realized I was having no fun. How but fortunately, we have the key to escape reality. And you may see us tonight with an illegal smile. It don't cost very much. Just but it leave it. Long, long. Get some cold water and put it on top and drop it fast.